Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read S5 5054. Juni B. Jones and some sneaky picky spying. Chapter 1 Sneaky Picky Spying. My name is Juni B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice. Except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B and that's all. I go to kindergarten. Kindergarten is what comes before first grade, except for I don't know why it is called that silly word of kindergarten, because it should, it should be called zero grade, I think. My teacher has the name of Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. and that's all. Mrs. has a short brown hair, a long scotch of wool, and she smiles a real a lot. A real lot. Except for sometimes when I'm noisy, she claps her loud hands at me. It used to scare me very much, only then I got used to it. Now I don't even pay any attention. I wish Mrs. lived next door to me. And me and her will be neighbors and bestest friends. And also I could spy on her. Spying is when you be very quiet and you look at people through a picky hole or a crack up crack or something. I'm a very good spyer. That's because I have sneaky feet. My nose doesn't whistle when I breathe. Last Friday morning at Grandpa Miller's house, I hid it in the dirty clothes hamper. Then my grandpa came in the bathroom and I lifted up the lid a tiny bit and I picked my eyes at him. And guess what? Grandpa Miller took his whole teeth right out of his head. Oh, uh, that's what. I popped right out of the hamper. Hey, Grandpa, how did you do that crazy thing? I hollered. But my Grandpa screamed very loud, and he ran out of the bathroom pretty quick. Grandpa Miller has high blood pressure, I think. Pretty soon, Mother hurried into the bathroom with angry fit. That's it, she yelled. No more spying. This is the last time I'm telling you. Do you hear me, Missy? Do you? Yes, I said. Because you are hollering right in, in my ear. That's why. Her mother took me home. It kept, well, she kept on staying mad at me, finding something quiet to do. She said, kind of growly. Your baby brother has to take his morning nap. So then I thought and thought about what to do. And a very great idea popped into my head. First, I took off my loud shoes. Then I tiptoed into the baby Ollie's room in just my sock feet. And I spied on him through the bars in his crib. Cause what could be quieter than sneaky picky spying? Of course, only too bad for me because that boarding old baby just kept on slipping and slipping and he wasn't being fun. So that's how come I accidentally blowed on his face. And I tickled his nose with the ribbon and I shouted, wake up in his ear and guess what? All he opened his eyes and that's what. Then he started crying very loud and mother ran into his room only she didn't even see me because I quickly hid it in the closet. Then Mrs. Oops. I smiled too, just myself. I'm the bestest spire in the whole wide world. I said inside my head, that's how come when I rode the bus to school that day, I did a little bit of bragging. I'm the bestest spire in the whole world. I said to my bestest friend named Grace. Then I took off my shoes and I showed her my sneaky sock feet. See, I said, see how quiet they are? You can hardly even hear those guys. After that, I breathed in and out for her. And see, my nose doesn't whistle either, I said. That Grace smiled. I'm good at spying, too. She said, I patted her. Yeah, only too bad, Grace, but you can be as good as me. Because I said it first. That Grace did a mad breath at me. It is called a huffy, I think. 
I heard your nose whistle, Grace, I told her. Just then the bus got to school, and me and that Grace raced each other to the playground. Except for she beat it me, only it, it didn't count because I wasn't really racing. Then we played horses with my other bestest friend named Lucille. Only pretty soon the bell rang, and we all runned to room 9 speedy quick. Mrs. was at the door waiting for us. Good afternoon, ladies, she said. Good afternoon, lady, I said back very polite. Then Mrs. smiled at me. That's because she's the nicest teacher I ever saw. And so I wish me and her were bestest friends. Guess what else? I wish I could hide in her hamper. Chapter 2. Questions. Me and my bestest friend Lucille sit at my same table together. My table is where I sit up straight and do my walk. Don't talk to my neighbor, except I keep on forgetting that part. I wonder where Mrs. leaves. I whisper to Lucille real quiet. Shh, said Lucille. We can't talk or else we'll get in trouble. And anyway, you're not allowed to know where she leaves because it's a secret. They, uh, says who I ask, says my brother, that's who. And he is in third grade, and he says teachers have to keep their house a secret, or else kids might go there and throw rotten tomatoes. I did a huffy at her. Yeah, only I don't want to throw rotten tomatoes, Lucille. I explain, I just want to hide in, in her hamper, and that's all. I don't care, she said. You're still not allowed, because my brother said so. And he knows more than you do. So there, I made an angry face. So that is not a nice word, Lucille, I said. Then I made a fist at her, except for Mrs. saw me. And so I had to unfold it. After that, I behaved myself very good. I set up a real straight and I did all my work Work is when you use your brain and a pencil. Only sometimes I accidentally use the razor too hard. And a big hole rubs in my paper. Hey, I did, a, I did beautifully today. I called out. Because guess what? No hole. That's what. Mrs. came to my table. She put a gold star on my work. You did do beautifully, Genevieve, she said. Maybe I'll hang this one on the wall for Grandparents' Day on Monday. Would you like that? Yes, I said. Only I keep on forgetting how come those guys are coming to this place. Then Mrs. explained to me all about Grandparents' Day again. She said, our grandparents are coming for a visit, and we get to show them room 9. And also, we get to have freshmen together. Mrs. said the freshmen are cookies and, and, and beverage. I raised my hand. Yeah, only I don't think I'm allowed to have the kind of drink named average. Because I'm only allowed to have milk and juice, and that's all. Mrs. looked up at the ceiling with her eyes. Then I looked up there too but i didn't see anything how many of you think you can bring cookies on monday asked mrs i can i can i hollered very excited because my mother is the bestest cookie baker in the whole world that's why except for one time she accidentally forgot they were in the oven and the fireman had to come to our house Mrs. laughed, only I don't know why, because that was not a funny story. After that, she gave me a note from Mother. Was there some writing about baking cookies, I think? If your mother has any questions, please tell her to call me, said Mrs. Just then, I got a very great idea. Hey, I said, maybe me and my mother can bring the cookies to your house. And so then I can see where you live. 
He says, rumple to my hair. You don't have to come to my house, Junibi. Let's bring the cookies to school on Monday morning. Oops. I smiled very sweet. Yeah, only I still want to see where you live, I said. Then Mrs. turned around and she walked back to her desk. That's how come I had to follow her. Do you? Do you have the rich kind of house or the regular kind of house? I asked her. Because I just have the regular kind of house, except for mother wants the rich kind. Only daddy said, lots of luck. Mrs. pointed at my chair. That means to sit down, I think. Yeah, only do you have a daddy that lives at your house too? Are there any pictures of him in your wallet? Let's look in there, okay? Do you have a secret compartment in it? Because my grandpa Miller has one of those things with uh, 50 bucks in it. Only don't tell grandma. Mrs. took my hand. Me and her walked back to my table. Yeah, only guess what I'm wondering now. Now I'm wondering what your bedtime is. Because my bedtime is when the little hand is at the seven and the big hand is at the six. Only I hate that dumb, stupid bedtime because I'm not even tired yet, of course. Mrs. put a finger up to her lips. That's enough, Johnny B, she said. A minute. I want you to settle down now. Then she went right back to the front of the room and she didn't answer any of my questions because guess why? Mrs. is a secret mystery guy, that's why. Chapter 3, Secret Mystery Guy. Me and my bestest friend Grace rode the, bu rode the bus home together. That's when I told her about Mrs. and her secret house. Mrs. is a secret mystery guy, I said, because she wouldn't answer any of my questions. And so now I have curiosity about her. The Grace wrinkled her eyebrows. Me too, she said, and now I have curiosity about her too. I petted her again, yeah, only too, too bad. Grace, but you can't have as much as me, because I said it first, remember that? The Grace did another huff at me. Whoops, you know, they just still whistling, Grace, I said. A few minutes later, I got off the bus. I run to my house. Yeah, because Billy Rocky. Grandma, Grandma, I shouted, I shouted, very excited. It's me, it's Junie B. Jones. I'm home from my school. Grandma Miller babysits me and baby Ollie when mother is at work. She was in the kitchen feeding Ollie spraying the peas. Guess what, Grandma? Guess what? My teacher is a secret mystery guy and she won't tell me where she lives. Only I want to go to her house very bad. Grandma Miller shushed me. There is no need to shout, Johnny B. She said, I'm right here. Yeah, only I can't help it, Grandma, because I have curiosity about her. Grandma Miller did a little smile. Curiosity killed the cat, you know. She said that my mouth went open and my eyes got very big too. What cat, Grandma? Where did the curiosity kill it? Was it in the street by my school? Because I saw a squished cat in the street by my school. Only Polly Allen Papa said they got run over by the ice cream truck. Grandma Miller looked at me for a very long time that she went to the sink and she took an aspirin. Just then I heard a noise at the front door. And its name is Mother was home from work. Mother, Mother, I have a portal no, from Mrs. because you and me are going to bake delicious cookies. And then we can take them to her house and see where she lives. Mother read the note. The note says to take the cookies to school, Johnny B, not to your teacher's house. Yeah, only I already know that. But my teacher is a secret mystery guy. She won't tell me where she lives, and so you and me have to find it out ourselves. Mother shook her head. No way, Toots. She said, yes way. I have hollered. We have to. Because now I've got curiosity in me, and I have to find out where her house is. Or else Grandma said I'm going to get run over by an ice cream truck. Then Mother did a frown at Grandma, and Grandma took another aspirin. Your teacher is not a secret mystery guy, Johnny B, said mother. She's just a regular person with a regular family. And there is no way that you and I are going to bother her at her house. I stamped my foot.
Yes, we are. We are too. Because I want to. That's why. After that, I got sent it to my room. Because of no shouting and no stamping my feet. Only I never even heard of that dumb rule before. I shot my toe, very angry. Then I put my head under my pillow. And I called my mother the name of Pewee Head. And guess what else? I said very quiet. Teachers are not regular people, so there. Ha <laughs> <clears> ha. <throat> Chapter 4. Cookie Mix and Other Stuff. The next day was a Saturday. Saturday is the day me and my mother go to the grocery store. I have rules at that place. <sighs> like no hollering the words, I want ice cream. And no calling mother the name of a big mini when she won't buy it. No eating a bag of marshmallows that doesn't belong to you. Or else the store guy yanks it away from you and he says, Eating is the same thing as stealing, young lady. Then he takes you to mother and she has to pay for the whole entire bag. Except for I don't know why, because I only ate three of those soft guys. And that's all. The carts at the grocery store have seats in them. That's what babies sit. Only not me, because big girls get to walk. All by their, all by themselves. And guess what else? One time, mother even let me push the whole big cart without any help. Except for then, some baked beanies got knocked off the shelf. And the grandma got a foot cart in my tire. And so now I have to wait till I'm a bigger. My favorite aisle is where the cookies are. That's because sometimes there is a lady at a table there. And she gives me and mother cookie samples. And we don't ha even have to pay for them. The name is Freebies, I think. Only too bad for me. Because this time, the lady wasn't there. Darn it. I said very disappointed. No freebie today. No freebie lady. But a smile. That's okay when we get home. <clears throat> We're going to bake our own cookies for grandparents' day. Remember? Won't that be fun? She asked. Made my shoulders go up and down. Because... I was still mad at her for not taking me to my teacher's house, of course. What kind of cookie mix do you want? asked mother. I did a frown at her. I don't even want to bake cookies anymore, I said, because you still won't take me to where Mrs. Leaves. Mother uh, rumpled my hair. Staying mad isn't going to change things, Juni B. She said, now do you want to pick out the cookie mix? Oh, shall I? Then mother picked out some cookie mix and she gave it to me. And I throw it in the cart very hard. Thank you, said mother. You're not welcome, I said. After that. A little talk is when mother is mad at me. And she says, who do I think I am, missy? And exactly how long do I think she's going to put up with me? Then I have to say, apologize to her. Apologize is the word, I'm sorry. Except for you don't actually have to mean it, because nobody can even tell the difference. After the little talk, we went back into the store. Shall we try again? Asked mother. Then she gave me another box of cookie mix, and I put it in the cart. Very nice. That's better, she said. Thank you, you're not welcome. I said inside my head, then I smiled to just myself. Because mother... Uh, can even hear me in there. After that, me and her went around the corner, and I saw my most favorite thing in the whole world, and its name is the water fountain. Water? Hey, I need a drink. I said, very excited, and I run right over there, and I hopped up on the little step. Need some help? Called mother. No, I said, because I'm almost six years old, and that's why. And so I, I already know how to walk this big guy. And here's another thing I know, she, I said. No putting your mouth on the water spout, or as germs will get inside you, and you will die, smiled, very proud. Paul Ellen Puffer told me that, I explained. Then I bended my head over the fountain, and I drank for a very long time. Hurry up, Judy B, said mother. 
I need to get the shopping done. I wiped my mouth up with my arm. Yeah, only I can hurry up or else I might get a stomachache and spit up water. Because a boy named William did that on the playground yesterday. Mother looked at her watch. Okay, well, I'm going to be right here in the central aisle. As soon as you finish drinking, come directly back to me. Okie dokie, I said very happy. Then I turned around and drank and drank and drank. Except for then I started feeling a little bit sickish. And so I had to sit down on the little step and rest my water. That's when the big front doors of the grocery were open. And guess what? My eyes almost popped out of my head. That's what. Because I saw a big shark and its name was Mrs. My real life teacher named Mrs. Was at the Greece's grocery store. The end.